Hi y'all, welcome to or back to a piece of my content. <laughs> I am trying out something new today. I'm feeling a little inspired, probably because I don't have a job currently. Yep, don't have a job again. So back to square one, looking for a job yet again. But that is because I've moved. So I'm in a different state, need a new job. Anyways, I have some extra time on my hands. So I wanted to try out something new. I wanted to try out maybe a little bit of a talking series, a little bit of a... I'm afraid to say it, a little bit of a podcast format. I am not starting a podcast, mainly because a podcast seems like a lot of commitment okay that is a lot of committing to do i don't necessarily know what we're calling it at this time we're calling it hannah's saying what she feels so let's not even call it that because that was really bad anyways i do have a topic i want to talk about today and that is the olympics what is everyone talking about the olympics because we wait for this thing to come around every four years it should be all we're talking about there's a lot going on whether you like sports or not whether you follow these sports year after year it's always fun to kind of tune in support your country it's just one of those moments where you're like i feel the patriotism alive inside of me it is alive and well I want today to talk mainly about the Olympic opening ceremonies because it was weird. It was different. It was nothing that we've ever seen before. It was just, I think France was trying to be groundbreaking. France is always trying to be different. They're always trying to be artsy fartsy. I think they achieved that. Was it good? I don't know. I kind of like that it was different, but like, I don't think it was a good opening ceremony by any means besides Celine Dion. That was amazing. So let's just jump right into it. I made kind of a notes list on my phone while it was happening to try to kind of understand and be able to digest what happened later on. So start at the very beginning. My very first note is random announcers. Okay. I just feel like the announcers for everything NBC's got going on. It's really weird. It's it's giving, trying to be culturally relevant. It's really trying to be like so cool and like different with their announcers. Main ceremony like announcers were Kelly Clarkson. Okay, I get that she has a daytime show now. So maybe she's like used to this kind of announcing gig, but like she doesn't do a whole lot of live events. And I feel like you really have to bring something to the table for a live event, like some funny commentary. She was just kind of filling the space with, oh, I'm loving this obsessed with this i am living for this right now you know she was giving those kind of comments which it filled space it filled air but like did we need that was it adding to the conversation no she was kind of saying what we were all thinking sure i don't know it just felt a little weird for traditional commentary next up we had Peyton Manning. Okay. He's been covering some live football games, so he has a little bit more experience, but kind of didn't seem like he knew what to say. Maybe they didn't want to talk too much because there was so much going on. I don't know. No one knew what was going to happen at these Olympic ceremony, like the opening ceremonies. So like maybe they were speechless because there wasn't a whole lot of commentary. The next up was a normal guy, which don't know his name, but he works for NBC and like does these things year after year. So he did good. He was the one bringing the, the facts, bringing whatever was down on their fact sheet. He was the one saying, oh, this is happening because of this history. Cool, that's all I really needed. I just wanted to know what is going on and why is it going on? He was kind of the man to bring that information. We also had a couple cuts to Snoop Dogg, which it's kind of funny that Snoop Dogg has become like this national icon for us. It's hilarious. He's funny. It was crazy one time. It kind of cut to Snoop. Snoop said something in a very like poetic rapping type way. I don't think Peyton Manning quite caught anything that Snoop Dogg said at all. He was just like, okay. Because Snoop said something along the lines of, he looks dapper fresh, wrapped up in a little serving. In a you know, like I don't even know what he said, but he, um, he said some stuff and it was it was fine. I love Hoda. I love Savannah Guthrie. I think they're pros at what they do. So I'm loving the Snoop Dogg coverage. Although I thought he was going to be talking more and now I just feel like he's at all the events, but not really talking. I don't know what's happening there. Okay, now that we've covered the announcers, let's go on to how a lot of it was in French, which obviously because the games are taking place in Paris. Love that. But I just maybe needed a little bit more translations because once it got to the point where, you know, people were speaking in French, they did kind of cover that. But a lot of like opening kind of pre-planned stuff was in French. I don't know a look of French. I know we. We. 
that's it. So maybe that's my problem. It probably is. I should know more French. Next up, let's talk about the first big appearance besides all the athletes was Lady Gaga, which there were rumors that she was going to be performing. So when Lady Gaga came out, she did great. She did awesome. I didn't know who it was at first. Sure enough, it was her. But I was just so surprised that she was on this tiny little stage on the side of the river. Like, it just felt like... She where was her audience? Where was everyone? Like, were people having to watch from across the river? It was just kind of an awkward placement for Lady Gaga. We need her on the Eiffel Tower along with Celine Dion. That's kind of how I felt. She did great. She sang beautifully, but like, just felt like they gave her a tiny little platform to perform on when like Lady Gaga needs the entire, she should have had one of those bridge segments. Like they had a runway segment. Lady Gaga needed to be performing on the runway. That is my two cents. Next up, this is the point of my notes where I just start kind of putting my feelings out there. So, you know, there were lots of pan over shots and I appreciated that. They had some like pre-recorded segments in the museums. That was really cool in the Louvre. The segment with like, I think it was called Liberty and it was all about liberty in yourself in your love in your life france is like a leading kind of self-expression place like you know because they have so much art in their culture they really put forth free love and free like self-expression i think it was good to put that in their kind of opening ceremony i just thought it was kind of an interesting way to show that to the entire world because obviously in america we aren't so open in love and all that kind of stuff so you know there has been a lot of online discussion of that was too much you know to put on global television i did think it was an interesting way to express that i don't know that they necessarily should have done that but you know what it's their olympics they can do whatever they want and it was very artistic it was and the people that it freaked out we're not surprised okay so it was hilarious like kelly's little comment like at the very end they like as commentators they did not know what to say during that part because obviously it's like some sort of like threesome thing going on okay and the announcers were just kind of like oh 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 huh and then the three of these people who are obviously about to like kiss make out do whatever behind closed doors close a door go into a dorm room or su of such close a door and kelly just goes oh i guess we're not invited okay all right, Kelly. Okay, next up, the camera angles on all of this, it was just bad. People are commenting about how there was just a lot of kind of rain, which that was that was one major kind of element of surprise that no one could have controlled was how rainy it was. Like it was just kind of sprinkling at first, but it was like a straight on downpour for the majority of the whole ceremony. And since it was outside, there was no escaping all of the rain. There was a lot of cut to shots where it was like, what are we doing here? Why are we filming like at the feet? People are running in front. Of, I, you just couldn't see like the whole ceremony that well it just felt so like in the moment and a mess like it was chaotic it was chaotic the way that everything was filmed but i think a lot of that had to do with they couldn't practice this it was just kind of like this is the segments that are going to happen and we're just gonna when it says to go go i personally loved how all of the athletes were on the boats going down the sin okay i thought that was super cool it was like weirdly organized in a way you didn't get a whole lot of coverage of the athletes which a lot of people are complaining about because usually like traditionally how it's gone the opening ceremonies are all held in an arena all the athletes walk in that's like the first hour or two of the opening ceremony and then the rest is like a cultural kind of expression of the country it's taking place in this was kind of like oh here's this country cool here's this country like you didn't get a whole lot of zoom ins on like special athletes it was just kind of like here's the boat here's the the flags but I thought it was like a great idea in theory. Different dancing segments that happen. I think the dancing went on too long. My personal opinion. Let me cut back to the athletes on the boat. Every single year I get that like we are sponsored by Ralph Lauren, like Polo Ralph Lauren, whatever it is. I hate the blazer collar outfits for the US. Like I think we could do better. I get what they're trying to do, like it's supposed to be like classic, like maybe kind of represent your country and like maybe fashion that started in your country, which like, okay, denim, we get it, but like the blazers with the white polo, like it just is not cool. It's not cool. I think we could do better. 
Some of the other countries have like very traditional outfit, but they modernize it in such a way that it's like sick. Like, where's that for us? Navy blazer, white collar shirt. I just think it could, could have been cooler. That's all. There was like one little segment with the minions. Like there was some little like animated short with the minions in there. Like, I don't know if that was to kind of like grab the attention of the little kids and like bring the little kids in on getting excited about the Olympics. But like, what was that? And like, were the minions speaking French? I just, I don't know where that came from. And it was, it was kind of cute, but like, I just felt like it was kind of random. Is there a new Minions movie out? I thought there was one that came out, but that was like months ago, right? As for the performances that were like the French performers, cool. That was interesting to see. But it does kind of like show, as Americans, I feel like we have the biggest pop stars. Because who are those people? Yet again, I may just not be cultured, but like have no clue who either of those like rappers were. Did they do a good job? Yeah. The guy with the really deep rapping voice, that was interesting. One quote I pulled from Kelly after the whole thing was, okay, obviously it's raining. So everyone is just drenched. Kelly goes, everyone is killing the wet look tonight. Good one, Kelly. Good one. I liked that. They were kind of killing the wet look though. Like they kind of were slaying the wet look. As the night went on, I felt like it got more and more emotional, maybe because like it was getting like darker in the city and like the lights were coming on. So it was just like kind of gorgeous and beautiful. But like, I have no idea as far as ge geography goes with France and Paris. The closer the athletes got to the Eiffel Tower, it was just, like sparkling when they got like right there. How are you not just crying your eyes out? Also, maybe it's because they were all killing the wet look. So you couldn't tell they were crying, but like I would have just been sobbing. The Olympics has to be just so emotional for them because I'm emotional watching them at home. How are they not just bawling their eyes out constantly? Oh, I would be remiss if I did not talk about how that girl started singing Imagine. I thought we all knew that was like a joke to sing Imagine. Cause like ever since all the celebrities sang it during COVID, it was just so silly that like that whole thing happened during COVID and all the celebrities got together to bring the world together and sing Imagine because they thought that was going to like heal the world. And then this girl singing at the Olympics and it's supposed to be like a really touching moment. But like, I'm just being like, not fucking Imagine. Like really guys, really Imagine? Imagine all the people. That song is not, it's not touching. It's, it's silly, but while she was singing it, there was a piano on fire right next to her, and that was really cool. That was pretty sick. The very end of the ceremony, we had the biggest moment of the night. I think we all kind of, if you had heard rumors about performances at the opening ceremony, people were saying that Celine Dion was going to be performing, but like we never knew when it was gonna come. Celine Dion on the Eiffel Tower, just her and her piano, man. That was the most, amazing thing I've ever seen. I could cry thinking about it right now. Kelly was crying on air. She couldn't hardly speak. The words had been taken from her because she knew how much this meant to Celine. And I thought that was really powerful too because like, especially since all the Celine stuff has came out with her kind of, um, I don't know, is it a documentary? Like, just talking about the struggles she's had. Celine is just so powerful in general, her voices that, and her singing in French too, it was so, beautiful. I mean, like, that's all you can really say about it is it was just like, she sounded so good. I do wish yet again, I knew what she was singing about. I guess I just need to learn French. Literally, she was on top of the whole city. Everyone's looking up at her. I'm sweating just thinking about it. Anyways, that kind of wraps up my thoughts as a whole on the whole opening ceremony for the Olympics, Paris 2024, baby. I'm really excited to watch everything for the next couple weeks. I wish the Olympics went on for literally a month. Although it's about day three and I'm kind of bored. Women's gymnastics, obsessed. Swimming, so cool. Also learning to love rugby sevens, rugby sevens anyone? Mainly because it's like pretty action packed and it only lasts like 15 minutes. That's sick that their games only last 15 minutes. Why is it more sports like that? Why are we dragging things on for an hour? Let's just get it over with in 15 to 30 minutes. Women's volleyball, men's volleyball, indoor volleyball, basketball, what else? Watching a little bit of tennis. Love to watch fencing, Olympic fencing, pretty sick. I love like that you can turn on the TV and like a sport is playing and it may be the most random sport you've never watched before, but it's so much fun to watch it in the moment and cheer for your, your team, cheer for Team USA. It's also just cool to see all these international athletes and kind of just see like 
the very best, most athletic beings in the entire world all get together and compete. The Olympics are sick. We're watching a bunch of athletic freaks. Get it. Just getting it. That wraps up my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope that you will like, subscribe, maybe comment what sport you're watching the most or maybe the moment you hated the most from the Olympic opening. The most hateable moment was probably the can can dancers because it just looked, seemed like chaotic. Like, were they supposed to be on different times? Were they all supposed to be dancing as one? We'll never know. We'll never know like what the choreography was there. The like anarchy like portion of it where it was the rock band and like the girl with her head cut off. Very interesting, very artsy. I can appreciate a little bit of artistic take on things. Anyways, thanks for watching. I literally might put this out as a podcast because sometimes I feel like it's boring to like sit and watch someone not move at all and just sit on a couch and talk. Would y'all be interested in listening to me on Spotify? <laughs> Let me know. I think I'm gonna try to make this a series, put something out every Monday and Wednesday, and then a video out on Friday. That is awfully optimistic of me. So I better get to work right now. Gotta go, thanks for watching. Tune in, see you later, bye.